postpartum hemorrhage okay is a blood loss of over than 500 ml after normal vaginal delivery okay or 1000 ml after a cesarean section so 500 or above 500 after normal vaginal delivery or above 1000 ml after a cesarean section in what time we can call this postpartum hemorrhage we divide postpartum hemorrhage into primary or secondary postpartum hemorrhage primary uh, postpartum hemorrhage is in the period within 24 hours of uh, post delivery okay secondary postpartum hemorrhage is in the period between 24 hours and 6 weeks uh, secondary to delivery okay so within 24 hours it's primary postpartum hemorrhage within 24 hours to 6 weeks is secondary postpartum hemorrhage you have to know that him, if hematocritic change was uh, above 10 percent then we most probably need a blood transfusion okay we need a blood transfusion in some statistics uh, they say that a uh, two to three liter blood loss may need coagulation factors and the places because if the patient loses more than two to three liters then she will lose a lot of coagulation factors okay so she need replacement of these coagulation factors and platelets what are the types or the major causes sorry for postpartum hemorrhage they are four t's the major causes are four t's tone goes for atony it is the most common with a 90 percent percentage okay trauma trauma is second most common trauma is laceration of the genital tract within the vagina the cervix okay and so on thrombus thrombus is the third risk factor what I mean by thrombus is coagulation defects DIC embolism amniotic fluid embolism and so on okay retained a product of conception and you ask where is the T here? The T is in tissue. Tissue. Retained tissue or product of conception like placenta. Okay. So these are the four major uh, causes of postpartum hemorrhage. Tony atony, trauma of the uh, uh, genital tract, thrombus, coagulation factors and tissue. Retained product of conception. Okay, and we have also some minor uh, causes that really happen. Okay, like uterine rupture and uterine inversion. Uterine rupture and uterine inversion. And now I'm going to talk, speak uh, on each one of these uh, causes uh, in details, starting with atony. What is uh, atony? Uterine atony constitutes about 90% of all cases or causes of a postpartum hemorrhage and it is a failure of the uterus to contract and involute after delivery. Normally after delivery we have uterine contraction okay and the effect of this uterine contraction is that it constricts the spiral arteries in the uterus and constriction of these spiral arteries will stop bleeding. Okay, if we don't have that constriction and contraction, if we, uh, in other words, if we have atony in the uterus, then we will have a bleeding. We will have a bleeding. Okay. What are the causes of this atony? Why do we have atony? Because of the first factor is retained product of conception okay retained placenta for example or part of the placenta may cause uterine atony instrumental delivery is 
also important cause over distinction over distinction of the uterus by logic over distinction of the uterus will cause uterine anatomy how could it be over distended the uterus like in polyhydraminous and macrosomia baby anything that enlarges uh, the uh, uterus okay polyhydraminous a lot of fluid macrosomial multiple gestation okay these three are the most important of our distinction of the uterus okay, so we said retain pieces of our product of conception instrumental delivery over distinction of the uh, uterus a, breezy, a previous history of atony okay is associated with subsequent risk factors of or risk uh, uh, possibility of another atony bacterial toxins like in uh, chorionitis and uh, endometriitis and okay and so on bacterial toxins these bacterial toxins may cause atony of the uterus multiparity and especially grand multiparity okay when we have over five paras okay so these and the drugs of course there are some drugs that cause the uterus to relax and not to contra contract like magnesium sulfate okay and if we give overdose of oxytocin then we may have atony multiparity also okay we said that multiparity grand multiparity especially so these are the causes of uterine atony and you can just expect them retained piece of, uh, of, uh, of uh, products of uh, uh, conception in the uterus will uh, definitely will cause the uterus to be distended and atonic okay the uterus will not be able to contract when there is uh, there are some pieces in it okay so instrumental delivery also for distinction of the uterus previous history of atony bacterial toxin multiparity especially grand multiparity of five okay and drugs that relaxes uh, drugs that relax the uterus like magnesium sulfate and oxytocin now let's move to the diagnosis how do you diagnose uterine atony just by palpation of the uterus by palpation you can see that the uterus is soft and it's enlarged and buggy okay soft enlarged and buggy as expected of course now let's move to the treatment or the management of uterine atony how to deal with a case of uterine atony first of all you have to rule out local causes of bleeding like cervical or vaginal laceration then if we may if we are sure that we have uterine atony we have to start with intensive uterine massage with IV oxytocin pitocin pitocin oxytocin pitocin okay so uterine massage plus IV oxytocin if that did not work then we move to methergin the second line of treatment is methergin okay and methergin is contraindicated in hypertension in hypertension we can't give methergin also if methergin is not working with us then we move to hemapate hemapate is prostine and prostine is another name of prostaglandin f2 prostaglandin f2 so oxytocin methergin prostaglandin f2 which is called prostin or hemabate okay and it is give, uh, given as injection in the uterine musculature okay and it is contraindicated in asthma so methergin is contraindicated in hypertension hemapate or prostaglandin f2 is contraindicated in asthma okay and if that does not work we can give mesoprostol mesoprostol is a prostaglandin e1 okay and it is given when we have no electricity because it is not uh, uh, to be kept in the freezer okay so we can give mesoprostol sublingually and rectally also if we don't have IV lines we can give mesoprostol what if all these medical methods of treatment did not work no oxytocin, methergin, hemapate, prostaglandin F2 and no 
misoprostol was able to work then we move to surgeries okay we have to do dnc to rule out retain the product of conception if dnc also did not work then we can use one of these two inflatable balloon bakri balloon the, uh, the this inflatable balloon just to stop the blood supply of the uterus or reduce it as much as possible okay and we also can do intervention uh, we can call interventional radiologist to do uterine arteries embolization if that also did not work then we can move to exploration laparotomy with ligation of pelvic vessels the procedure that we ligate pelvic vessels in is olary procedure the vessels that we ligate are the hypogastric, the il, uh, ilio, <coughs> internal iliac, I'm sorry, okay, the hypogastric, the internal uh, iliac, and the uterine arteries are ligated, okay. What if th uh, this ligation uh, did not work, then we have to move to a procedure which is B. Lynch that tries to suture the uterus in a way that the, uh, uh, that it does not to bleed okay and if B lynch also did not work then we move to hysterectomy to hysterectomy as a last solution for the problem so what to do in a case of uterine atony first of all we have to start with st stabilizing the patient uh, ABC IV lines full catheter and uh, these uh, things that we mentioned in antipartum hemorrhage management then we start treating by oxytocin oxytocin with uh, uterine massage if uh, oxytocin did not work we move to methergen then to prostin then to mesoprostol then we do dnc to uh, see if we have any retained piece of conception after dnc uh, if it fails then we move to inflatable balloon, Bakri balloon, to stop blood supply in the uterus or the bleeding in the uterus. Or we can call an interventional radiologist to do embolization of uterine arteries. Okay, and after that we move to the invasive exploration laparotomy with ligation of pelvic vessels, ligation of pelvic pelvic vessels with olive uh, procedure. Uh, the pelvic vessels that is like that are ligated is hypogastric uh, and iliorenal uh, <coughs> sorry <laughs> internal iliac and the uterine arteries and after that move to B Lynch procedure and then B Lynch procedures we just uh, uh, suture the uterus okay and after that we move to the last solution hysterectomy okay hysterectomy Thank you very much for watching, next video I'm going to talk about the other causes of postpartum hemorrhage.